Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master, the surgical training for dentists. Welcome to part two of the Bad Canine Trilogy. And in the first video, I talked to you about the challenges that were associated with a bad canine that needed to be extracted. And if you didn't watch it, go back, watch this video where I describe the challenge or the challenges in regards to implant placement and also from a restorative point of view. In this video, I'm going to talk about the virtual drawing board where I'm going to take the data and import it into a computer guided software and plan the implant positioning, taking into account the special anatomy for the case and also the restorative positioning. So in order to determine the best implant positioning for the case and understand all the surgical challenges, we need to send the patient for a CT scan and get this uh, in the form of uh, DICOM files. And I'm also going to have uh, models taken of the edentulous site and also a duplicate model of the wax up. Now I'm going to take all this data, the CT scan in DICOM form and the two models in STL form and merge them together to receive the virtual patient file that can now be opened in the computer guided software. So what I did, I imported all this information into the uh, Simplant software. We have the DICOM images and we can see the uh, 3D uh, rendering uh, right in here. Um, you know, it's easy to look at the uh, root configuration. We see a lot of um, the um, root prominence, we see some of the bone loss on the lateral incisor. We can also look straight into the sinus and we can see the roots protruding into the sinus. So we know we're going to have a sinus proximity issue in this area. So I also imported um, the edentulous uh, site here in, um, in pink. You can see the mesiodistal uh, space that is increased. In this area it's going to be a restorative challenge. We see some spacing. And I also imported uh, a wax up of the canine and you can see the asymmetry between the um, the two canines because we had some bone and tissue loss in this area. Now we we can merge all these uh, sets of data the wax up, the edentulous area plus the DICOM data and now we basically have a virtual image that we can plan with. So uh, if you look at the uh, initial screen on the upper left hand side we have the cross section uh, the first thing that I do, I'm going to check the quality of the merge. So I'm just going to look at the different uh, slices along the arch. And I'm going to ma make sure that all these lines are roughly the same position. And that tells me that the merging of the wax up in the edentulous area plus the CT scan is very accurate. So I'm just going to see and make sure that it also follows the outline, outlines of the teeth. You can see it follows the outline of the hard palate right in here. So I know this is a very good, uh, a very good merge. Uh, the next thing is that I'm going to do, first of all, I can have total control over, over uh, what I'm going to be looking at. So I'm going to turn off the 3D rendering. It's not relevant at the moment. And I'm going to go to a section that goes through the wax up. So I'll go through to the number six uh, wax up. You can see it right here on the... Um, Lower, uh, lower right side, and I'm going to arbitrarily place an implant in this area. Now the software uh, picked a 4.3 millimeter implant. Uh, we will uh, now uh, change the properties of this implant. We will mark it as the number six, so we have it defined. Uh, we will choose uh, the implant type. In this case, uh, an implant with a conical connection and with a 4.3 diameter and a f an 11.5 length. This is at the moment arbitrary. And I'm also going to connect an abutment that is not an abutment in the normal sense. It's a conical abutment. I'll make it in a color black in a um, 3.5 diameter and a length of a 15 millimeters. So this is not really a restorative abutment. It only allows me to see the uh, trajectory of the implant. So any way that I uh, move the implant, it, it will move with this abutment, and then we'll see uh, what restorative changes are happening when I do that. Okay, so that that uh, really helps me visualize the right uh, prosthetic 
position. So what I'm going to be aiming for is a screw axis through the cingulum of, um, of the wax up. So we see it's a little bit too much to the distal and too much to the buckle. So we will make uh, one, uh, one change at the moment just to uh, account for the um, buccopalatal position through the cingulum. And by looking at the implant in a centric view, meaning the implant is the center of the cross section, now I'm going to be, I'm going to be looking mesiodistal. Uh, I can tell, and you can look at the the um, the uh, rendered roots and teeth. You can tell that this implant is is uh, is not parallel with the adjacent lateral, which which is very important. So I'm going to align it now with the lateral. Okay, make it more parallel, and see what it does to the restorative position. So we're looking much better now. We're a little bit too palatal at the moment. So I'll move this implant a little bit more to the to the buckle, uh, uh, just uh, bodily, just a little bit. Okay, and now we have a relatively good restorative position. We may be able to do it a little bit more. So you can start seeing that this implant, at least at an 11.5 millimeter length, is going to be protruding into the sinus. So this is an abnormal sinus that extends uh, much more mesial than uh, the norm. So we will have to do a sinus augmentation at the same time. Okay, so uh, that's a reasonable uh, position. And I can also uh, measure the depth of placement. So I'll turn on, I'll turn on the, um, the soft tissue here in pink. And this will show up on the uh, on the cross section as well, so we can make some measurements from the uh, soft tissue to the platform of the implant. Now the question is, where do we make the measurement? And for that, it's very important to ter turn on the wax up again because the wax up will show you the CJ. So the CJ is right here. So we need to measure about you know three millimeters. We'll see if it's um, it's possible in this case. So here's the wax up, so I'll take my measuring tool and I'm going to measure three millimeters roughly from this point to the platform of the implant and we'll see if it matches up. So it's it's pretty close, 2.78. Uh, Actually, I prefer if this implant is uh, at bone level because we would like to take advantage of every, every millimeter of bone uh, for initial stability. Now, a very important part of the planning process is to make sure that we're not uh, touching or getting dangerously close to uh, adjacent roots. And you can look at the 3D rendering from all sorts of directions. And you can tell that there's, um, there's a distance, there's a gap. But we can actually measure this gap in the axial view. So what I'll do, I'll look at the axial view uh, starting from the platform level, which is right in here. And I'm going to make a measurement to the adjacent lateral incisor. So we see we are, we are actually very close. We're less than 1.5 millimeters and we'd like to be between 1.5 and 2 millimeters. So I'm going to uh, make a measurement that is let's say between uh, 1.5 and 2. So let's call it 1.8. That's reasonable. And now I'm going to take the implant and move it distally, bodily, in the uh, axial view so we're now at a safe distance. Now we have to check and see what it did to the uh, restorative position. So for that reason, we need to turn on the wax up again and see if there was any anything that was uh, disturbed. And actually, this is a much better position restoratively. It's right in the middle of the tooth. Um, the trajectory is through the, um, through the cingulum. And that tells me that this is going can be a screw-retained crown, a screw-retained provisional, or at least we have the choice to do it. And I now know that I need to plan for a sinus augmentation at the same time because the tip of the implant will be protruding into the sinus. So that, that is something that I'm going to uh, be showing in the next video. The guide itself um, is going to look like that. Uh, it's tooth supported. And we are, I think we're ready to, um, to order it. We, we need to pay for it and also uh, book the patient for the procedure. And let's see how this uh, is going to work out. So now that I ordered the surgical guide, it should be here in about five to six days. And in the next video, it's surgery time. 
I'm going to show you how this case was completed, uh, including implant positioning and sinus augmentation. And I hope that you are finding these videos valuable and useful when you are treating bad canines in your practice and with their particular challenges. So I'm excited to see you in video number three.